Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique, and today we're taking a quick look at the brand new Drive Shaper from Cable Guys. This is a module inside of the Shaper Box 2 plugin, and it's absolutely fantastic. If you're into saturation and distortion and having control over the automation of those things, this is a plugin for you. So what I'm gonna do is actually jump over to a very simple example to let you hear the distortion types and give you a run through of the actual plugin itself. And then I'm gonna jump into that project you heard in the intro and show you where I used it and how I used it in a more of a real world application style. So this is it right here. Uh, it's a module, as I said, inside of the Shaper Box. The Shaper Box now has all of these, but you can buy these independently or individually, and they'll just get added to the Shaper Box as you buy more. Obviously, if you buy the Shaper Box 2 suite, you get all of these different plugins. So Drive, as I said, is saturation and distortion, and it comes with 10 different distortion types. So what I have here on the channel inside of Ableton Live is just a uh, really simple subby bass. Let me go ahead and just solo that. All right. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I usually throw saturation and distortion on a clean sub bass because it really brings out the character of the distortion and saturation types. You can really hear what it does to the sound. And then having that knowledge, you can apply it to other things like vocals, drums, leads, what have you. So if I just go ahead and run this particular pattern, just a preset sweep down here. I also want to point out that I do have the volume shaper here doing a sort of side chain pumping because I do have a four to the floor kick there. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now so you can really just hear what's going on. Okay, so what we got here is a multi-band section right here, and this particular pattern I can apply to a certain frequency range. You can have up to three bands. You can see here as I pull it over, this one's the mid. If I flip over here, this has a different pattern. If I flip over here, it's got a different pattern as well. Let me go ahead and just... These are preset LFO shapes down here. You've got sweeps, one beats, hits, rhythmic stuff. Okay, and then we have input and output drive. And what Cable Guys suggest is that you get the red as the distortion is being added, it'll be added to this line. And you wanna get it pretty close to going over to the edge here. So you can see that it's happening there and that's because I have it up to 10 dB input gain. It does have relative gain matching built into the plugin itself, but if you feel like you need to boost or reduce the output, you have the option right here as well. So if I put this back down to zero and this to zero, you see how that red line isn't going quite to the edges? If you really want the distortion dr engine or the drive engine to really be taking hold of the signal, you wanna make sure it's going pretty close all the way over the entire display here. Then you have the drive amount over here, which will just move everything relatively and it will keep the shape. You can see here, that I've reduced the peaks over here. If I come back down, it will remember the peak size and it will re uh, retain that value. Uh, then we have the LFO mode here, which we have beats, hertz, or pitch. Then we have the grip value, which is how the distortion reacts to the quiet parts of the waveform. And another real quick thing here, if you hover over any perimeter and look down here at the bottom of the plugin, it will give you the sort of quick info that you need to know. That being said, let's go ahead and check out the different distortion types. And I'm just gonna switch up the length here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that play and just flip through the different distortion types. You obviously can come into the menu and choose one from here, or you can use these arrows as well. Wow, 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 wow,
All right, so there you go. I actually really like these rectify ones. I find this a really pleasant distortion sound. You can also accent certain things, which is going to make the distorted parts of the LFO or envelope louder or softer. And then you also have a tone control, which is kind of like um, a way to make things darker or lighter. And this is only applied to the distortion being added to the original signal. So just a further way to really sculpt the sound that you've got. Then you have your mix over here, and we've already talked about the LFO modes. This is where you find the different lengths you have. That's gonna change if you change it to Hertz, for example, then you'll have a Hertz value, uh, so on and so forth. Then we have MIDI triggering, which I've done a video tutorial on before. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. I'm not gonna cover that here. Then we have the LFO smoothing amount. This is the LFO, and you can smooth it to if, like, for example, you have, um, let's see, something like this. And something that's really cool here is that you'll see this is the shape that's been made and then the actual uh, thin line there is the path that the actual output or this distortion is following. So it's really cool to be able to visualize that uh, without even he having to hear it. There's also a built-in envelope over here which is an envelope follower and we'll just follow the waveform and add uh, distortion to it. Now, obviously, if I've just got a straight signal, uh, it's not gonna really do anything, but if I took the shaper box and put it on this kick, open that up and use that envelope. So that way it's just gonna follow the incoming waveform shape instead of having to put in or draw your shape. And by the way, all your drawing tools for the grid or the LFO here are up here at the top. And not only that, but you do have really in-depth envelope controls over here, including the threshold, release time, you can shift, you can hold, you can uh, add attack or reduce it, and so on and so forth. A really, really robust set of controls inside of this plugin. And of course, the fact that the saturation distortion sounds absolutely phenomenal, you got yourself a real winner here. If you've been watching the, the live streams recently on the channel, you know that I'm a big fan of saturation and distortion and you can never have enough. Each plugin's distortion and saturation are gonna have their own flavor, and each project is gonna need its own particular flavor. So the more, the better in that department. Now let's come over here to the project that I actually had started here and just check out where I've used it inside of the project. So well, actually, let's go ahead and listen first to the project as a whole. So that's kind of like a pre-drop sort of part of a track and I've got the drive shaper on a number of different elements here. On this one I'm using it on the synth. Particularly at this part right here where the drive is up fairly high, it's giving it more of a punchy, almost percussive element to the actual bass itself. Instead of the really smooth bass, it's giving it a sharper, punchier one that really sticks out in the mix. And that's what it's doing there. Pretty straightforward stuff. I also have it on this sort of plucky thing over here. which is just adding a little bit of grit to that. Again, higher frequency content. I've got the extreme fold style here going on this particular clip. And then I even have it on the master down here and I've got it just on the high frequency content and says mid just because there's a high band hidden over here. But over here, and by the way, if you can, you can actually blow this up and really see the waveform to make better decisions on where you could do this as well. You can actually solo these things So that's a great way to be able to visualize and be able to hear by use of the solo mechanism to really focus in on adding distortion and saturation just to the elements or part of the frequency spectrum that you wanna add those things to.
And there's one other place I have it here, um, which is a very common way I like to add some variations to my snares. I've got it on the snare drum here. And it's just adding a bit more to the first one and a bit less to the second one. You can switch those around or you can make the grid a little bit bigger and go a little bit slower and then have even more uh, variation to the snare. But it's just a good idea to have uh, not just such a repetitive computerized percussion. And I like to do it on snares for sure, especially on a four to the floor beat where things can feel a little bit repetitive if you don't have some movement. But anyway, that's how I used it inside of this project. That's most of the key features of the Drive Shaper. It's brand new. It's available now on PluginBoutique.com. Definitely click the link in the video description if you want to check it out. I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.